Today I am going to read the book Grand Canyon, A Trail Through Time, written by Linda Vieja and illustrated by Christopher Canyon, which is an awesome name for a guy illustrating a book about the Grand Canyon, don't you think? This book has gorgeous illustrations and the text has so many amazing descriptive words. There's probably going to be some words you don't know, but listen to the other words around them and see if you can figure out what they're talking about. It's, it's beautiful and will definitely give you a good image in your mind of what the Grand Canyon might be like. I like this picture. It shows the different layers of the rocks in the Grand Canyon. And if you can see on this page, it tells you the names of the different kinds of rocks on each layer and how old those layers are. Notice at the top, it's in age by millions of years. So this red wall limestone is not 330 years old, it's 330 million years old. So the bottom layer of the Grand Canyon is somewhere between 800 and 1,200 million years old. That's really difficult to even imagine. Grand Canyon. I have never been there and would love to go someday. A pre-dawn storm rumbles over Grand Canyon National Park. Cracks of lightning shatter the dark sky flashing above an enormous plateau of peaks, valleys, and trenches where ancient mountains once stood. The deepest trench is called the Grand Canyon, one of the seven natural wonders of the world. Dawn comes, bringing daylight to spires and buttes standing like sentries on the plateau, worn down by weathering and erosion. Coyotes teach their pups to hunt for food in thick forests along the edges of the canyon. Sentries, it talks about how these buttes stand like sentries. Sentries are like soldiers, and buttes are these things. So they're kind of like what we call a mesa or a plateau, except they're narrower. And the, or the author is sort of explaining that these buttes stand almost like soldiers. Kind of a cool comparison. Thousands of visitors from all over the world have come to view the splendor of the Grand Canyon. In campgrounds and lodges near the north and south rims, they prepare for the day's activities. The morning sun climbs above distant mountains, revealing cliffs hanging over the Colorado River at the bottom of the Grand Canyon. The river took almost six million years to carve the canyon, creating a channel about one mile deep and more than 275 miles long. Wind and water wore down its steep sides, widening the chasm between the cliffs. A raven glides across the opening, making lazy circles over the river far below. So this river made of nothing but water actually carved this mile deep long canyon into the rock. That's how powerful water can be over time. The sun chases away shadows on the craggy rocks thousands of feet below the rims. Pack mules begin a five hour trip down to the deepest part of the canyon. They follow each other along a twisted 10 mile trail to the riverbed. Clouds of dust follow them as voices from the top fade away. How would you like to ride on a mule along the edge of the canyon like that? Five miles down the hill around it. Canyon visitors along the trail peer with curiosity at symbols of people and animals that were painted on a boulder by Havasupai Indians long ago. Havasupai still live in the canyon today tending their flocks and farms in the summertime, hunting small game and gathering nuts and berries in the winter months. As the sun moves higher in the sky, smaller side canyons with rocks layered like multicolor ribbons come into view. Bighorn sheep walk easily along the steep walls of the canyons, 
looking for food in hidden pockets of soil. Wildflowers stand around them in patches of purple and pink. Look at the adaptation these sheep have for being able to climb on the rocky, steep sides of the canyon. The mules continue down the trail to the inner gorge. They carry their riders past layers of rocks that display millions of years of the Earth's geologic history. A canyon wren looks for bits of brush to line its nest, hidden in a rocky crevice just off the trail. This is the wren, the bird. It searches for twigs and grasses up and down the canyon walls, flying past fossils of fish teeth and seashells. The noonday sun glistens on a hidden creek near a granary built into the canyon wall by Anasi Indians almost 1,000 years ago. Squirrels chase through the now empty granary where crops and plants had been stored for food and trade. A lizard scurries off the trail. It climbs over fossils of prehistoric trilobites embedded in layers of shale millions of years old when the, grass, when the land was covered by primeval sea. After the mules pass, the lizard creeps out from its hiding place to soak up the warmth of the sun. Do you see the fossils of the trilobites? Remember learning about trilobites? In the layers of shale, shale is a type of rock. And remember, the lizard has the adaptation of being able to warm itself with the sun. It is a cold-blooded animal. The afternoon sun, sun hangs low in the sky. A white-breasted nut hatch flies above beaver tail cacti along the rocky banks of the Colorado River. Its song drifts over ancient pink, white, and gray rocks at the river's edge, the roots of the mountains that stood there almost two billion years ago. The water tumbles over cascading rapids, while trout search for quieter streams in which to spawn. I love the language there. The water tumbles over cascading rapids. Beautiful language. A ringtail cat drinks from a slower side stream, watching for predators up and down the red rocks and along the river nearby. Laughter echoes from a bunkhouse as weary riders and hikers share stories of their descent into the canyon. The endless cycles of eroding rock and moving water carved the Grand Canyon millions of years ago. Blustering wind and pounding rain continue to widen it, grinding down rocks that used to be mountains and volcanoes. The rushing Colorado River deepens this natural wonder, dragging rocks and mud along its path through ancient plains and lava flows. The mules rest for the night in a corral near the river, awaiting tomorrow's seven-hour trip back up to the top. Weather and erosion make tiny changes every day in the rocky walls along the trail. Millions of years into the future, the same forces of nature will continue to reshape the Grand Canyon, digging even deeper into the history of our planet.